Surviving the storm. What does that mean? Well, we're all faced with the same types of struggles. There's no struggle that comes along that's not common to man, the Bible says. So everybody is in the same boat going through similar stuff. So this might help you. You're not the only duck in the puddle. I'm having a hard time, and I wish people knew that I'm having a hard time. Well, listen, beloved. Join the human race. Right? We, we have struggles in life. That is part of the human condition. But we're in this struggle not to be defeated, but to be more than a conqueror, to be victorious, and to experience victory. How many of you like victory? I love victory. I love seeing people overcome things. I love seeing people getting blessed. Uh huh. And I, 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 I understand that through the greatest of struggles comes the greatest of victories. You take a kid going through 12 years of school. That's a long time, right? And parents, you walk, watch them walk across the stage when there was times you thought, are they going to make it? You know, and, and even though the uh, principal gets up and says, now we're going to behave ourselves, we're not going to yell and scream, there's still parents that go, yeah! Come on, Abby, you know what? You're, you're ready for it. Are you going to sling your hat up in the air? That's going to be a great day. But great triumphs happen through great trials. And today, we want to talk about surviving the storm because I want you to survive the storm. An attitude is essential. Turn to somebody and say, he's probably talking to you. Because if you position yourself right now for defeat, guess what you're going to experience? If you are going to stay, as Janice said, in depression and not fight it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be in depression. Why did she overcome that? How did she overcome that? Well, she's here. Evidently, she did. So she gave us some ideas today. How to keep yourself motivated. How to stay in the Word. How to keep yourself from being depressed. You, it's an attitude thing. Every day you have a choice. You can either walk by faith or you can let fear dictate your life. You can take your challenges and say, I'm defeated, and you'll be defeated. Or you can say, bless God, I didn't come to, uh, to this point in my life to give up. I've crossed too many mountains. I've gone through too many rivers. I have seen struggles and have fought my way through and that's the only reason I'm here today coming this far I didn't come this far to quit we talked about marriages right sometimes we push our way through and we get married and we stay married for years I'm talking to some of you and I always thought it was a shame. You know, people put 40 years, 35 years into a relationship, and they get older, and the kids move out, and they say, well, that's it with that. And believe me, there's been times Sister Tyner would have walked out if she wasn't a woman of God. There's plenty of times, Sister Tyner, that you probably would have. But we're here today as a testimony of what fortitude will do. Attitude, staying together, determined, wanting to make it through those storms in our life. You have storms, I have storms, and there's some on the horizon, and if we want to look at that, we would never ever be motivated to move forward. Those that observe the wind will never sow, the Bible says. Right? There's always something. There's always new challenges ahead. I'm talking to some of you. You're looking at life with that kind of attitude that you have. 
Turn to somebody and say, don't have an attitude. No. Well, bless God. I can see where this is going. We're destined for a hard year this year. Well, we're going to prepare for that. One of the things I want you to do is make sure you're out here on Wednesday nights. The next few weeks, we're all going to be in here. And we're going to prepare ourselves for this coming year, not in a spirit of fear, but in faith and knowledge of what God wants us to do to make ourselves ready for the challenges that we have ahead. We're going to make it, bless God. We're going to do a good job, and we're going to be a stronger church because of it. Now that's a good attitude. That's a positive profession. And I want you to learn some things from that. Because you live what you say. I said you live what you say. You know that. This particular passage of Scripture comes from Paul's journey to Rome. We've heard this story. Some of you have heard it preached many times. But today, we're going to preach it another time because it's worthy of it. I feel in the Spirit that there are some that need to understand that they will survive this storm. And the Holy Spirit has prepared you, even given you knowledge, that there are some things ahead of you. And the Apostle Paul, on his journey to Rome, his life was racked with peril and he heard it from the Holy Spirit. But it's no different than his life in general. We have battles throughout our life. And as we're marching forward, we're going to have battles in front of us even more. And I don't think it's going to subside. I think there's going to increase. Uh, the battles are going to increase. Now, don't be discouraged from that. Because like I said, through every battle, there's victories. And we have, we've always taught that there's going to be an end-time revival. How many still believe that? I believe that God is going to pour out His Spirit just as he said, I don't think we've seen the fulfillment of that. I think it's still going on and the, the latter will be greater than the former. So I think as we march forward and we start to see some of these other things come to pass, the glory of God will be revealed in the church like never before. That means you and I. We possess something that's very powerful. And God's going to use it in these last days through our struggles to get the word out to some others that need to hear it. You've been given a sphere of influence, beloved, for a reason. So your struggles need to be a means of your testimony and your word that you're presenting to people. Good news. Everybody say good news. I got good news. I preach good news. We're to preach the gospel, the good news to all creation. That's the duty of the church. The duty of the church is to have good news that we speak. It is the Word of God. It's the Word of prophecy. It's the saving virtue that God has given us an understanding of. And it's part of our identity. So you are part of the resource that God has to bring about His will upon the earth. And so we celebrate that, don't we? Turn to somebody and say, God's going to use me. Even in my struggle. Even in my storm, God's going to give me a platform. Say it. God's going to give me a platform. You're going to shine the spotlight on me, Nathan. There's going to be times that the workers around me are going to look, look to me. I'm going to have something to say. Aren't you one of them Christians? Well, yeah. Sure am. You believe it's the last days? Sure I do. What do you think about this? Well... I see God having His hand in it. Hallelujah. All right, let us go ahead and read. Acts chapter 27, verse number 13. And when the soft wind blew, supposing they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Now he's on the boat, going to Rome. He'd already told them, he said, I perceive that this journey is going to be racked with peril. 
How did he know that? Well, you say, well, he had a knowledge of winds and, and times of the year. Certainly, probably did. But beyond that, he felt it in the Spirit. Do you feel things in the Spirit? How many of you feel like right now that the Holy Spirit's kind of perking up our radar? There's some things that God's saying about where we're at. There's a reason why you feel the way you do. There's a sense of urgency in the air for the church. Right? So are we hearing things from God? What do you think? I believe we are. We're sensing things. We're hearing things. God is preparing us. His sheep hear His voice, the Bible said. Right? But not long after there arose against it a tempest wind called Eurachlodon. It was a north, northeastern wind. The time that brings tremendous storms. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running into a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so were driven. Everybody say it was a mess. Anytime you start to gird the ship, you take what was happening, they were taking cables and ropes and wrapping it around the hull of the ship to keep it together. Somebody said, keep it together. People are having a hard time keeping it together. The people around us, the society around us, is trying what they know to keep it together, and they're not doing a very good job because they're right in the midst of a storm that they have no control over. It's the season for it. And doing their best, they can't do anything but to survive. Does that sound familiar? In other words, the situation has overwhelmed their capability. And if you don't understand that, that's exactly where we're at. There's such a storm that we can come up with some ideas of how to try to help the situation, but it's over our heads. Brother Clay, am I helping you out for Wednesday night? It's over our heads. It's more than what we can deal with. We can only do so much for so long. That seems hopeless. But what's the message today? Jeff, don't ask me what the title is. It's surviving the, the storm. All right, good. It'll be on the internet. Surviving the storm. I like the pictures they take of me. The, the thumbnails, the still shots for YouTube. I'm He does a good job with that. Oh, <clears throat> get these papers out of here. <clears throat> and the third day, oh, and we exceedingly tossed with the tempest, and the next day they lightened the ship. They started throwing some things overboard. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Things that they needed. Things that helped the ship move along. They were giving up hope and they were throwing that stuff overboard. Hopeless. Helpless. You're going to get into some things in your lifetime when they, you hear things like there's nothing else we can do. Some of you have already heard that. There's not one thing else we can do. They, they, they give up. Right? And when, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no uh, small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. 
But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them, saying, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, I told you so, and not have loosed from Crete and gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort to you to be of good cheer. There's a preacher for you. How dare he smile? Have a good attitude. Let me know what I'm going through. Can you just hear their grumblings at this point? You crazy preacher. You be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, of whom I serve and who I am, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sell with thee. Therefore, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, because I believe God. I love that. It shall be even as it was told me, howbeit we must cast upon a certain island. Now, what was he going on? What was he going on? A word? Right? Promises? Well, prior to that, the Bible says in Acts chapter 23 and verse number 11, the Lord Himself stood by Paul. You can't get any greater than that. Right? You talk about it. Peter said one time, he said, I have a more sure word of prophecy. Because he was there on the Mount of Transfiguration. It wasn't secondhand knowledge. He's seen the Lord transfigured before his face. Turn to somebody and say, I know that I know that I know. Oh, yeah. You come too late to tell me anything different because I heard this from God, straight from the Lord. Seen it with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears. The Bible says that the Lord Himself said, Be of of good cheer, Paul, for thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, and so must thou bear witness also at Rome. So he had already heard this from the Lord. Going forward, then it comes a little easier when I hear a word from the Lord. What then is important for me as a Christian? What do I need to hear? I need to hear a word from God. Now, this is not just having a pep talk with yourself. Some people think that that's how we get a good attitude. We just have a pep talk with ourselves. Part of this attitude thing is going to come from the idea that I've already heard a word from the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying to me. If I'm going through a possible struggle, guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to hit my knees. I'm going to say, God in heaven, I need to hear from you. I'm having a hard time here because my mind is telling me something. Hmm? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. They'll pull down strongholds, but what else will they do? Cast down imaginations? Because my imagination can grow wild. Anybody else have that problem? Start having an issue, and all all of a sudden, the devil's plaguing your mind with thoughts, and if I let that overtake me before long, i got some stinking thinking going on here. Anybody in the house beside me have that problem? Well, I can just see it. We're going to have to sell the house now. Come on. Going to sell the house. Going to have to get rid of that new car with the new car smell because I can't afford it anymore. I'm going to lose my job. That's what Buddy said down there at work. He said they're going to close the plant. Help me, somebody. Devil climb right up on your shoulder and start speaking things to you. You done made a mistake. Started out on a business venture that you can't complete on your own. Don't you know the time that we're living in, it's hard to get a business up and going? Anybody in the house go through stuff like that? Devil says you can't afford those employees. Too many of them. Your overhead's too much. 
We start fighting this and fighting this and fighting this and fighting this in our mind. The struggle of the mind is, is our worst enemy and the devil knows it. So what does he try to do? He tries to instill fear in us. Because he wants you to be motivated. Listen to me, beloved. I'm talking to you. He wants you to be motivated by fear. Because fear will cause you to make decisions that you will regret. It's coming straight from hell. The message from hell is to quit. Turn to somebody and say, he may be preaching to you. Throw in the towel. Give up. And that's what you see everybody else doing. And the devil says it's going to happen to you. You're going to be a victim. But the Bible tells me that all things work together for good. The Word of God's already spoken that to me. That everything is working together for good. That God's got something in mind. Far beyond what I can understand. He sees the horizon. He sees beyond the horizon. He knows about my tomorrows. And it's all a set up for what God's getting ready to do. And some good stuff. Not bad stuff. Good stuff is coming down the pike. God is fixing your future for you. God's already said it. I got your tomorrows. I got some plans for you. You're going to have a voice that's going to be heard. You're going to do things that's going to make a difference. I'm not done with you yet. Turn to somebody and say, he's not done with you yet. If you operate by fear, you're going to quit before your time. You're going to, you're going to hey, you're going to abort the baby. There's something down inside of you that's to be birthed. God's using your disaster for a platform. Let that settle. And I just see it blowing up around me, Pastor. I can't help their emotions. I can't help what they're saying. I can't help what they're doing. Don't you understand who, what kind of predicament I'm in? Because everybody else has the say. I'm just in the boat. I'm just in the boat. And these bozos around me are making some pretty bad choices. Look at me and smile. Nobody ever know I'm talking to you. Sometimes we feel like it's, you know, we're, we're just a victim. You ever been there? Yeah, people make decisions for you and you're thinking, oh my Lord. Here I am in the same boat. I done hitched my wagon to somebody that's crazy. That's the reason why Sister Tyner is smiling right now. Oh Lord. What did I get into? Praise God. But everything is working together for good. So I need to have peace. There's a peace that passes understanding. There's a peace that comes to us when we're in the presence of the Lord. In His presence is the fullness of joy. There's something that happens. He, Jesus said, my peace I leave, my peace I give unto you. And He was saying it at a moment when the most tragic thing that He could say to them has been coming out of His mouth. I'm going to leave you alone. But it's essential that I do. Because the next phase in your life, as you walk through this with me and you see me on the cross, is that the Holy Spirit's going to come. And you're going to do greater things than you've ever thought. Greater things than what I have done. It's going to change your life. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be dynamite. Turn to somebody and say, it's going to be dynamite. See, he didn't want them to have a poor attitude. He said, don't let yourself go there, people. He said, don't let yourself go there. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't get afraid. 
He said, I'm just fixing some things for you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. This should be a party now. Because this isn't about defeat, it's about victory. This next phase of your life is going to be fantastic. God's prepared you for this moment. It's been all the other storms that's brought you to this time. Where you're facing the northeastern called Eurocladon. It's all in the plan and purposes of God. Isn't it something? Those blow up moments when everything around us seems like they're just being blown to pieces. Your world's turned upside down. Your kids come and told you something crazy. Your heart's breaking. The Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit's trying to speak to you today. You need to listen to what God's saying. Because if you don't listen to this, the devil's devil's going to plague your mind. You need to come out of that. Turn to somebody and say, come out of that right now in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We know with whatever temptation God, the Bible says, will make a way of escape for us that we'll be able to survive it. There is a way that you don't see right now. There is beyond the sea that you're looking at in front of you that seems to be this immovable object. The Bible lets us know through those lessons that he's taught us God will make a way where there seems to be no way that he'll send a wind and blow back the waters and you'll part over on dry ground. You can't see it right now. You can't. That's a word from the Lord. Somebody needs to take that right there. You can't see it right now. It doesn't even appear that there's an answer to it. But God didn't bring you here to destroy you. God didn't place you here because He hates you. You're here because He's called you. Because He loves you. Because He's going to use this moment in life for you. It's not meant to bring your destruction. It's meant to give you a platform. How in the world could this ever equate to that it doesn't even make sense but you can do all things through Christ even though you don't understand it accept this fact that you are a child of God filled with the spirit blood bought that the captain of your salvation has never lost a battle He's leading you into this warfare. He's never lost a battle. He's equipped you for this moment. You have what it takes. Turn to somebody and say, I have the right stuff. I have what it takes. God's given me every weapon I need. God has given me the authority to use it. And bless God, I'm going to do something with it while I'm here. I'm going to give the devil what for. I'm going to do everything in my power to put a smile smile on my face to give the Lord a testimony. I'm going to praise God in my storm. I'm going to let people know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think, because I've got the Holy Ghost in me. According to the power that works within me. You have what it takes. You've got the answer to every problem that you'll ever face. It lives inside of you. You, always, you, you don't understand this, but the seed of every provision you'll ever need is already in you. The seed of it is already living inside of you. The seed that will cause you to have more than enough already exists within you. In your creation as a new creature, God placed that seed in you that will always give you life abundant. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundant. You're not just going to exist and survive. You're going to thrive. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Some of you ought to be shouting right now. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. (laughs) 
Praise God. So we face this obstacle with resolve. We understand that God's placed within us the idea and the knowledge that I can make it. I'm going to make it. We're going to get through this. And so I'm going to, throughout this time, when I'm tempted by fear, that's the spirit of the age, one of the spirits of the age. And Jesus said this in Matthew 24. He said that men's hearts will fail them for the fears of the things that's coming upon the face of the earth. How many see that that's the truth? We're living in a time when men are motivated by fear. The society is motivated by fears. The what ifs. Everything you read, everything you hear is what ifs. And people are motivated by fear. They're going through their times of struggle with the idea that, oh my, what are we going to do next? Instead of saying, God's going to give us provision, there's always going to be light in Goshen. When every bit of Egypt is dark, God already has the solution for you. The shoes on your feet going to last you supernaturally. That means provision is always going to be there. There's going to be quails. Woo! Hallelujah. There's going to be manna. There's going to be things that you don't even understand that God can do. So don't, I don't want no griping. I don't want no complaining. I don't want no people sitting there. Oh, that's not good English. But I don't want you to sit here. With a defeatist attitude. Come on. This is not a hunker down mentality in this church. We're not going to, you know, have bomb shelters where we're all going to crawl in and have this little cult where we're just going to barely make it. I see us standing on the street corners in the last days proclaiming Jesus is the answer. I see us reaching into the political realm and telling the world that Jesus is the answer. Can I hear an amen? God has given us this generation. We're raising up leaders, businessmen that can stand up in the face of adversity and say we're going to survive and beyond that we're going to thrive. Hallelujah. I want you to keep your focus. I really want us to, to war against fear because I heard that from the Holy Spirit. So to do that, you've got to change your mentality. You've got to have a ready mentality. Be also ready, Jesus said. A ready mentality, proactive. Do you get that? I want you to settle just a minute. I want you to hear that. A ready mentality means that you're being proactive. I'm thinking through the process. In the mind of the Holy Spirit, I am making myself ready for what's ahead of me. Now, Paul had to think this way because everything around him was, was thinking about the storm, thinking about the fear of the moment, the waves, everything in the situation was turned upside down. And he could have fell into that trap of allowing that to dictate to him what he was going to do, how he was going to think, how he was going to live. But instead of that, he become proactive. So he, get, he got this ready mentality. What do, what do I do in my leadership realm in this situation? Because I'm not looking at myself as a victim. He told Agrippa, he said, listen, man. He said, I, I would to God that you were not just almost, but altogether like me. I'm standing here in change, brother, but I got something you don't have. So he's seen himself in a leadership role. Follow me a minute. Look up here. He's seen himself in a leadership role. I'm, I got a clock right here, so I'm good. Just hang with me. So what do I do in this role that I have to make a difference in my situation? Well, I don't, I don't have the answer. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't have the answer. It's not within the realm of possibility that I know how to fix all of this. Because I don't. There's things that I can't fix. I can't. 
I don't know how to fix it. Well, I, God, you're our pastor and you don't know how to fix this. I thought pastors knew everything. Hey, look at me. That's not true, man. I don't want your confidence to be in this guy because your confidence needs to be in him. Right? And you, when I speak, if I'm not speaking the Word of God, you, you need to understand that and understand that he's just a man and pray for me. But there's going to be times that God's going to use this man to speak to you. So you've got to understand the difference, right? That, that was free. But I have to keep my integrity. So what do I do? What do I do? Well, Paul had to get away from the stuff. Watch me. You got a little knob on the TV set or a button. You, you have the capability on your phone just to shut it down. There's a button. Some of you don't know that. Your phone is on 24-7. There's a button on that thing that turns that off. It will actually operate better if now and then you turn it off and then let it boot back up later. Just a free piece of advice. Right? So I don't know how some of you keep your mind. I really don't. Because honestly... The world does not revolve around Biden and Trump. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody have enough nerve to say it. The, our world does not revolve around Biden and Trump. Turn that stuff off and get on your knees and pray. Because the Holy Spirit's trying to cause you to triumph and not walk in fear and disaster and humiliation. And I mean humiliation. When you see what junk is going on and you're thinking, oh my God, I can't believe that we're doing that. It's humiliating. I can't believe we're going there. I, don't, I can't believe it's this bad. I, turn it off. Shut it down. Get on your knees and pray for the nation. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to say it. You're going to hate me for it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Pray for Biden. Pray for the Pelosi's of the world. They need it. Pray for the Donald Trumps that run off at the mouth. Pray for them. But hit your knees. Get your mind on other things. Think about, okay, now my leadership role is causing me to do this now. I've got to have an answer. There's got to be a solution. There's got to be a, a situation where I can speak life into this. Because i got people around me going down. And if I don't speak something, they're going to, they're going to jump out of the ship. Because it's so bad... That they're wanting to jump out of the boat. And I know it. The Lord's already spoke to me. That they're going to want to jump out of the boat. They're going to want to do some crazy stuff. People that you know. That you love. Are wanting to do some crazy stuff. I'm speaking that pr prophetically to you. They're already tempted. They're already talking it. They're going to do some crazy stuff. Whew. Now what? See, you don't pray yourself out of the problem. That's what people think. I'm going to pray until God fixes this. You pray yourself into the situation. What did I just say? You pray yourself into the situation. Because God's going to use you to bring resolution to the problem. You are the instrument. That's why you feel the way you do. That's why you sense the things you sense. Oh, I'm preaching right to somebody. I feel it in the Holy Spirit. God's, God is God's using you because of what you feel, what you sense inside. It's in you already. It's in you. 
You are feeling it. You are sensing it. So God's going to use you. Now you've got to have the idea that God's going to use me. So what do I do? I've got to have a word from the Lord. Because I can't, I can't just tell you my feelings and help you. Turn to somebody and say, feelings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Feelings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Feelings. I can't sing, but you get the idea. They don't, they don't need your feelings. They don't need your opinion. Matter of fact, it would probably be a turnoff if you told them your opinion. Do you think people want to hear from you and they really don't? They're being polite to you to listen to you, but they really don't want to hear you. Put your hands together. It's true. You just need to hear it. Somebody need to tell you that. They're being polite to you to even listen to you. And you think you're all that. You're not all that. What will they hear? There's something in the hearts of those to whom God wants to reach that will resonate just like a tuning fork when you hit the right pitch. And their ears will perk up. And they'll understand that this is a word from God. I'll give you for instance. This young man comes into the king's office and says, I want to fight the giant. A kid. I want all of everything to fall upon my ability to face this giant. Now, if he was talking out of his own head, Saul would have said, you crazy. But there was something in the voice of David that wasn't David. So Saul's ears perked up. Let me help you out. I'm going to give you my armor. It wasn't his armor he needed, right? I already got what I need. Turn to somebody and say, I already got what I need. I like you, but you're not going to give me what it takes. I've already got that. Oh, hallelujah. That'll preach all day. So after a long abstinence, what that denotes is fasting. Right? Put down the ho-ho cakes. And the Twinkies. And what else? The Dum Dums and the Dodos and whatever. <laughs> and the Yum Yums. And, and you don't need to go to the buffet at the Chinese restaurant all the time. And the Japanese steakhouse that you haven't invited me to for a while. There's a time when you sacrifice and you fast and you get with God and you say, I've got to have a word. I've got to have a word, God. Come on, hang with me just a few more minutes. I'll close. i got to have a word. And then God shows up. See, that's what you were looking for. I want to hear from the Lord. I know the difference. And when God shows up, there's this blessed assurance that comes into your spirit because you know that God's voice is, is, is so sure. And you feel it down in your heart. You feel it in your spirit. And you know what you're going to say. That's the difference between where you're at now and where you need to be. Come on. Yesterday's promise is yesterday's promise. But you've got to live on today's word. That's a word right there. So what is he saying now? So I get a word now. And the Lord is saying, you tell them to stay in the ship. That nobody's going to get lost. Isn't that good news? It doesn't have to be like the devil says. The devil says it's a disaster and it's, it's never going to get any better. That's what the devil's saying to you. This isn't going to change. And you need to say, Satan, you're a liar. 
Come on, God made me some promises. God's going to stand true to that. And I, I hear the voice of the Lord telling me, and that's what you're hearing today. The Lord is speaking to somebody right here, right now, that there is a positive word for you. That this is going to turn around and it's going to be what God said it was going to be. So you're going to speak up. That's the next thing that you need to hear is that for this to take place, get ready, come to the music, please. For this to take place, there's one more thing that has to happen. You've got to be willing to stand up and say something. And here's this prisoner in the middle of chaos, in the middle of waves crashing, and stuff getting thrown overboard. Hey, y'all! Stop it! You're getting ready to have a disaster if you don't listen to me. But I heard a word from God. Can you imagine? The God who I serve has spoken through an angelic being. This is what He's going to do through this situation. God's going to use this and nobody's going to get destroyed. There may be some things in your life that will never be the same anymore. You, that's a word right there. Boy, I felt the Lord. We mourn that. We think to ourselves, God, I can't live through that because it's not going to be the same anymore. There's some things that shifted and changed. That, uh, and listen to me. You got to be ready and willing in these last days to accept that there's going to be some changes, but God's going to use the changes to bring about people's understanding and they're going to see God through all of it. And your life will change. But you have to let God do what God does best. If it were up to you, you would never have anything change. Everything would always be the same with you. Because that's your comfort zone. Well, I'm preaching to somebody right there. I don't want to see the boat fall. I don't want to see the boat. What are we going to do? And there's no ship. Well, there's an island. And we'll use the pieces of the ship to get to the island. Oh, God. I wish I had another hour to preach. That would preach. There's some things out of your past that God will use to take you to your future. And it's okay if it happens that way. Boy, that's a word from the Lord if I ever said it. But supernaturally, when people start to see how God has used you, you're never going to be the same. They're going to look at you in a different way. You're not just that crazy person over there that's in shackles. And I would love to tell you it was smooth from there. But they build a fire and were sitting around it. And a snake come and bit Paul. Are you serious, Pastor Tyler? Jesus said, I've given you power over all that of the enemy. Serpents and scorpions, right? The Bible said they shall take up serpents. It doesn't mean they'll play with them. You know what he did with that serpent? He shook it off in the fire. And they watched him to see if anything would happen to him, and nothing did. Where you're going, where we're going, is into a future that there's going to be other challenges. I am not going to paint you a picture that says you're never going to be challenged. I'm just telling you this. God's going to use every moment of that. 